So, hello everyone. Guten Morgen an alle. Uh, aus dem warmen Doha nach Deutschland, from the warm Doha uh, to, to Germany and, and all, all other countries who are dialed in. Uh, who are dialed in. Uh, warm welcome to this very, I'm very excited to this very excited session with Berlin Partner and some very special guests uh, from the Doha ecosystem. Uh, we will now um, discuss over the next two weeks in different sessions uh, about Doha, about Qatar, uh, its opportunities, its future, its key members of the ecosystem, and then especially want to know about you, the startups, and bring you together in, in some, some dedicated sessions. I'm really excited for that. But uh, before I give some more details, my name is Jörg. Um, I'm originally from Germany. I'm now since three years here in the region. Um, and I'm the program director for Tasmo Digital Valley for TDV, which is a program of MCIT to, um, uh, uh, of the Ministry of Communication Information Technology to support, to grow Qatar's digital ecosystem. Um, and with that uh, in mind, the target is to realize a digital economy and a smart future for Doha and, and the entire country of Qatar. And uh, to do so, we believe that one of the key points is to have a strong ecosystem and collaboration with technology, with tech firms and with startups uh, to grow and to boost this across all the sectors within the country. I'm very excited to do this together with Berlin Partners. Um, our relationship started, I, I think, mid of last, uh, mid of last year, um, a collaboration to exactly support this vision and mission of Tasmo Digital Valley and MCIT uh, to grow the collaboration, to attract startups, to attract tech companies. And I'm very, very happy that the session is happening today. Unfortunately, it's virtual. Uh, we, were, we, we had planned it to do it in person uh, a couple of weeks ago when some of you I believe already traveled to Dubai. And then the actual highlight was planned to come to here to Doha. Uh, but unfortunately, due to travel restriction, it didn't happen. Um, therefore, I'm even more excited that you're all here today. And also, next week, most of you probably know, we have the Smart City Expo here in, in Doha. And some of the Berlin partner startups will also be present in, in person. Really happy and excited about that. And that shows the big opportunities we are having here in Qatar together. Um, from Berlin Partners, we have Nadine Judas. She's the head of uh, the digital economy development. She will uh, also give introduction. Uh, but before I want to do some house, no fun without housekeeping. Um, important, this, this is being recorded. Uh, just for your awareness that we can uh, have this stream also afterwards for everyone who had not the chance to be here today. Uh, if you have questions throughout the entire session, please uh, use the chat option. And if you have technical questions, uh, give a direct message to myself and I uh, will take care of that. Um, yeah, after this housekeeping, we have, I mentioned already, we have really an exciting program today uh, and not a boring program as we do different activities. I first want to give you some quick facts about Qatar, and then I want to hand over to Nadine, who gives exactly the other perspective, how we all came here together, Qatar and Germany on the other side, what are the opportunities and the objectives from a uh, perspective on Berlin Partner. And then we want to give you a bit more overview in two keynote speaks uh, about uh, the ecosystem here in, in Qatar. Number one with Nur al Kuwari who is a, a, a project manager within MCIT and uh, TDV, uh, so the Tasmo Digital Valley program, to give an overview about the startup ecosystem here and about the role of MCIT to promote the entire ICT sector. Then we are honored to have Fahad al kuwari He's a senior manager for investor relations at the Investment Promotion Agency in Qatar, short IPEC. Uh, he gives an overview about Qatar's value proposition for foreign businesses and to give you even more reasons to come here to Qatar and help us to get a grow, uh, grow the economy. And after these uh, short keynote speaks, 
uh, we want to dive into a panel discussion with, with members I gonna uh, introduce later in detail. Uh, key members of the Qatar ecosystem who from free zones, uh, from development banks, investment funds, as well as from a taco company uh, to have a panel discussion to understand more uh, the opportunities here in the country from all perspectives. Following that, you will also have the, uh, uh, we will have a short Q&A session. So please uh, shoot, your, shoot your questions with us to the panelists and put them on the hot chair um, so that, that we get most all the insights uh, uh, you, you want. And after that, it's all about you. We want to get to know you. Uh, we want to get our uh, key partners here in, in Qatar to get to know you and to connect you. We will go into, and please excuse for this, into our Wonderland rooms, in our Wonder Rooms uh, networking sessions. We will have three of them, focus on health, for the, of, on fintech and smart city. And in each of the rooms will be one representative of all the entities in here. And this gives you the possibility to pitch your company, your startup, and then uh, especially have dedicated discussions about everything you want to know and opportunities to move forward. This for the program. Um, now, before giving over to, to the speakers, just some quick facts about Qatar itself, uh, which you may know, may not know yet, because it's not the biggest country here in the region, but it's one of the most exciting countries here in the region and also globally from my perspective. Um, it is not just one of the wealthiest countries uh, uh, globally with the highest uh, income uh, in one of the highest income per capita in the region, but it's also and uh, uh, globally, but it's also one of the fast, most fast developing countries and transformation com uh, countries in the entire world. It started here all as a fishing and pearling uh, spot destination. But now is one of the most advanced countries for technologies, for, uh, for digital development. And that's also uh, defined in the vision, National Vision 2030, where we have a clear agenda to even further develop these countries and to become one of the absolute uh, uh, leaders uh, globally. And one role of that, and that we witnessed over the, the last year, and that's why uh, this is really great to have this here today, uh, competitiveness, job creation, and at the end, the economy growth is, is based on startups of companies uh, starting their business and coming, coming to the region. And um, that's why it's also our target to develop this further. Just here, one note, Qatar was also ranked as number one in, in the Arab world uh, for, by the Global uh, Entrepreneurship Index uh, from a global competitive that studies for venture capital that also gives you some hints about really the standing here of this hidden and soon the pearl uh, uh, in, in, in the region. Qatar's mission is to drive the digital transformation technology and to attract startups to this destination. And this is for me the perfect bridge and handover to Nadine Judas from Berlin Partners to give the other side uh, to, to talk a bit more about Berlin Partners and the objectives about the collaboration with Tasma Digital Valley and Qatar. Over to you, Nadine. So thank you, Jörg, for the great introduction. And a hello and good morning from Berlin, from my side. It's a pleasure to welcome you here today. My name is Nadine Judis. I head the department Digital Economy and Startups at Berlin Partner. We are Berlin's development agency. We are Berlin's service provider for growth and innovation. And we support companies and investors in settling in Berlin and in their development at the Berlin location. Our Back to Global program here, including our past delegation trip to Dubai in February this year, as well as today's digital event, is funded by the European Fund for Regional Development as part of the Union's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. It is supported by the Berlin Senate Department for Economy, Energy and Public Enterprises and implemented in close cooperation with us, with Berlin Partner. The program is designed to bring back Berlin and its economy onto the international stage and promotes the establishment for international networks and business contacts for Berlin-based SMEs along five clusters. 
Today, we aim to provide Berlin startups and SMEs with an exclusive soft lending program here in Qatar. Berlin Partner and our partner TASMO want to support you in entering the international business in Qatar and enable you to get in touch with relevant entities, potential partners, investors, and customers. Some of you are already in direct contact with my colleagues here at Berlin Partner, but if you need some more information about the program or our services, please feel free to contact us directly. I would like to kindly thank our partners with whom we are jointly organizing <clears throat> this Doha event together. First of all, of course, TASMO Digital Valley. We really appreciate the close cooperation with you very much. The Ministry of Communications and Information Technology. And last but not least, our sister company, Qatar's Investment Promotions Ad Agency, Invest Qatar. Thank you for the great support. And of course, a big thank you to all participants here for your interest. Now I wish you a successful networking and an inspiring digital soft lending in Doha. Enjoy. Thank you so much, Nadine, for this introduction and overview. Really excited to have you here. Uh, thank you for organizing this. Thank you for bringing us all together. And uh, with this, I want to give uh, the word to uh, Noor al Kubari, uh, project manager in MCIT and TDV, uh, to give you an overview about the role uh, of MCIT to promote uh, the ICT sector uh, in Qatar. Noor, over to you. Thank you, Jörg. Hi, everyone. My name is Noor al Kubari, and uh, I'm the project lead at Tasmo Digital Valley. Uh, the program established by the Ministry of Communication and Transformation Technology. Uh, first, I would like to express my uh, utmost gratitude towards to uh, Berlin Partner and IBA Qatar team for their support and continuous involvement in making this event possible. Uh, I also want to thank our presenters and panelists who have joined us today to present to you with a comprehensive unified Qatar startup ecosystem. I believe Qatar's strength lies in our interconnected ecosystem and the ability to come together to support the development of a startup and innovations in the country. Qatar's startup ecosystem has evolved over the years to become more diverse. And with each passing year, we see more startup, more funding activities and more success story. The increasing diversity of our ecosystem is quite apparent to international startups and entrepreneurs to leverage Qatar as a scale-up location or entry into the region. And therefore, we are working with leading startup ecosystems such as Berlin Partner to establish global connection to support international startup and their expansions journey into Qatar. As mentioned earlier, Qatar's startup ecosystem is evolving rapidly, uh, rapidly and entrepreneurs are uh, funding many ways to support the launch of their ideas and enable the growth of their businesses or projects in the country and beyond. A look at the startup that Qatar has found in recent years tells part of the story. Startups such as Skip Cash, Sea Wallet, are few of the many success stories. The development and growth are down to many factors, including the effective of different government, semi-government and private entities. Other factors include government launched programs such as Smart Qatar program, Qatar digital government program and international events such as the 2022 FIFA World Cup. These are creation, uh, creating significant opportunities where many promising tech startup and SMEs that impact the state tech sector. Within this context, the ministry is committed to support startup to enable them to access opportunities, talent and innovative technology to grow and scale. The ministry is working toward creating a business friendly ecosystem for the tech sector and enhancing the comprehensive and attractiveness of Qatar. As such, MCIT has established several initiatives to support the startup. These include Innovation Lab, which aims to create and enable environment for collaborative R&D and the adoption of innovation solution. 
The Digital Incubation Center was created to boost ICT innovation in Qatar, particularly among young people at the critical early stage of starting or growing a technology-related business. TESMO Accelerator aimed toward to acceleration of innovation startup and SMEs by providing a wide range of services allowing the startup to grow and help the realization of uh, a diversified uh, economy. Additionally, the ministry has launched the flagship uh, program TESMO Digital Valley to achieve interconnected among various stakeholders to utilize the full potential of our diverse ecosystem. TDV is an innovation cluster where different sectors can come together to help achieve the vision of Smart Qatar. It's a platform that connects entrepreneurs, startup, investor, academic, academic researcher, uh, student, multi corporations, and uh, institutions with the common goal of innovation and uh, innovating a new digital solution. The program provides support and uh, promoting an innovation agenda to support the path to commercial, commercialization, facilitating business uh, setup for new companies and incubation for companies. With the launch of the program, the ministry will be actively looking to support the further development of a startup ecosystem. Along with its key partner, uh, the program will be launched to support ecosystem visibility and the scale up support for startup and investment opportunities. Some of the key program with, will include build a detected bro, uh, platform for a startup to provide holistic information about ecosystem trends, investment funding, matching tool, relevant statistic, category market entry uh, opportunities and know how and so forth. The program that aim to support mature and promising startup digital companies and SMEs uh, demonstrates great potential to scale rapidly through their growth stage. At the ecosystem level, the program will enable the increase of digital contribution to the GDP, creating job within the digital and ICT sector and digital expert and expansion to international ecosystem. Finally, I would like to thank Berlin Startup for your interest to be part of Qatar's vibrant startup ecosystem. I would like also to ensure the support that the ministry has for uh, this endeavor. This is only the beginning of the journey, and I'm sure that the Berlin Startup will be part of our growing ecosystem. I wish everyone a fruitful discussion ahead, and thank you. Noor, thank you so much for this overview. And uh, I, I take your last words and uh, we can already see some, we have this event today. We have some startups from Berlin partner and the Smart City Expo on site. So this is really just the start. Uh, so thank you for this. And now as the last keynote speak, I want to give the word to Fahad al uh from the Investment Promotion Agency Qatar, IPEC who will give a quick introduction about IPEC because also very, very exciting. And then he will give an overview from the perspective about the uh, Qatar's value proposition and the interest or the exciting opportunities here in the country. Fahad, over to you. And we Thank can you very see much. your screen. Yes. Uh, is that clear now? Uh, hello? It is clear, yes. Thank you, okay, Fahad. Okay, great. It's clear, uh, just yes. uh, great. I, I do have to share the sentiment with uh, Jörg because um, um, ich bin auch ziemlich glücklich hier zu sein vor einem deutschen Publikum zu sprechen. Äh, ich bin in Deutschland aufgewachsen. Ähm, ich habe es leider auf die harte Tour gelernt, dass man eine Sprache verlernen kann. Also äh, ähm, es ist immer gut, eine Gelegenheit zum Üben zu haben. Uh, and, and I look forward to, to hearing from all of you after this presentation. Leider können wir das Ganze nicht auf Deutsch machen, weil nicht jeder deutschsprachig ist, aber um, uh, I think uh, an, enough of the audience has uh, just understood that. Um, Fahad, I like this to... is great. Uh, many, many, many parts of IPEC, also Sumera of IPEC speaks German. So if, yeah. you, have one, if you want to have conversations, you're on the right hands. Yeah, we have, we have quite a few German speakers, correct. Um, please use this opportunity to take a picture of the screen or a screenshot 
Um, those are my contact details. And I, I, uh, if there are any questions or queries, um, don't limit yourself to this event. Do reach out. Um, I do want to uh, start this presentation with this slide because uh, the question that I need to answer is why Qatar, not necessarily um, what we have to offer. It's just why, right? And, and that area you see on the east to northeast coast of, of Qatar is where our ancestors used to dive for pearls. And um, our entire economy was based off of this commodity. And the diving itself was quite a dangerous endeavor. It was a um, um, life-risking endeavor. Currents would change, temperatures would change. And after World War II, uh, the Japanese came out with a synthetic pearl. So it looked like this pearl. They could mass produce it. It was cheaper. And so our economy crashed completely. Um, leading today, we're quite lucky because we're the largest exporter of natural gas in the world, but it still comes from the same region, right? We're still diving for a commodity on which our economy depends. So uh, what, the econ what uh, Qatar has done and, and, and really focused on is creating an ecosystem where uh, we invite talent to come to Qatar and we invite startups that grow and we help them in their growth. We are not a slow growing economy. So we don't worry about things like revenue and taxation and growth. What we worry about really is sustainability. So the success of the companies that come to Qatar is our success. And that's how we've built this ecosystem. Um, just a quick introduction on who we are. We are the national agency responsible for promoting uh, investment in Qatar. The national value proposition is very strong in the country. And it's split amongst a, an array of, of, of organizations. Some of them are on the screen. So the Free Zone Authority, Qatar Financial Center, uh, Qatar Science and Technology Park. In addition to this, you have Qatar Development Bank, which has an excellent incubation center. There's the Sports Accelerator for Sports Tech with an, also an amazing in, incubation center. So what we do is we'll look at your business once it comes in and decide where to put you so that it makes sense for your business. Um, because tech is an easy word to say, but it's an ocean of, of subsectors and niche markets and so on. I don't want to spend too much time looking at uh, things that um, all of us can Google, but it's important to know that we are the largest gas exporter in the world and the swing producer in the region. Um, we also have an array of, of value to, to add to any business. Uh, and amongst them, of course, is zero uh, corporate tax, up to 10 maximum, 0% income tax, um, full capital repatriation, so you can take your money in and out whenever you'd like. There's full ownership of your business, access to funding through an array of banks and, and development banks and so on. Um, zero customs duties, so anything in, out of the country, you won't be taxed. And extremely robust data protection laws. And it's these laws that are ever evolving and ever changing that are quite flexible that have allowed us to attract um, Companies like Volkswagen who want to do autonomous vehicles here, companies like Google Cloud who chose us over the rest of the region. We're quite flexible uh, with the regulations and we evolve as the business does itself because again, sustainability is the goal here. We rate quite highly amongst uh, an array of, of uh, metrics. We are number one in the world for internet connectivity. So you can go to the desert, sit on top of a dune and look at the ocean and you'll, you can take a picture and upload it to Instagram. You're connected everywhere in the country. And we have that luxury because it's a very small uh, country. We're number five in the world for healthcare systems. And we have the highest doctor to patient ratio in the world. So as a result of that, we have the lowest death rate as a result of COVID. Um, also, what's very important to mention is that we're number six in efficiency and responsiveness to change. That's very important for tech companies and startups because... What it does is it guarantees an ecosystem of sustainability and business continuity. Uh, over the past six to seven years, Qatar has had uh, quite a few speed bumps. Uh, we had um, conflict, we had COVID, which hit the rest of the world, and we had a fluctuation in commodities that is quite unprecedented in such a short period of time. Um, but the government has responded quite quickly. No international business was disrupted within hydrocarbons or otherwise. And all of the businesses here, and there's, I think, uh, around 300 plus German businesses alone, um, kept, kept going. So the, 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 the infrastructure is made to be resilient. It's made for sustainability. It's not made for um, quick revenues. In addition to that, uh, we, have, we are number four in the world in uh, attracting talent. And um, that doesn't only come from the ecosystem. It comes from 
um, our investment in attracting some of the world's best universities. So Texas A&M is here for um, engineering. Cornell Medical is here. Carnegie Mellon has an excellent robotics program um, and an excellent ICT program. Georgetown, Northwestern, and Qatar University are also great institutions. And in addition, I think just a few months ago, uh, the Doha University of Science and Technology was founded, which is another indication where the economy is going and where we prioritize ourselves, right? Finally, um, we have an excellent eco ecosystem, not only for giant uh, companies like Microsoft and Google Cloud, but I can um, also give you firsthand a, a case of, of a few success stories. My favorite one uh, that I like to mention to people is, is about a year ago, we attracted a small Turkish company with, they did um, artificial intelligence, predictive artificial intelligence. And there was around seven of them. And then within six months, they were announced as Microsoft partners here. The ecosystem grows very quickly. Um, and if you find a market where you are a niche player or where you have a lot to offer, you will grow as rapidly as the ecosystem is growing. Um, finally, what we do as IPA is we can open doors. So if you come to us with a business where you would like to pitch something, for example, to Al Jazeera, we'll open that door for you. We'll allow you to pitch. If you'd like to launch a pilot project for the World Cup, will open that door for you. We are your personal concierge because again, the success of any business that comes in is the success of the country and, and that's where the government resources are being placed. Again, don't hesitate to reach out to me at any time. I wanted to keep this as short as possible because I know you have a rich program ahead of you. And um, thank you, vielen Dank. Vielen Dank, Fahad. Thank you so much. That was uh, really a, a very nice summary and overview about uh, Qatar with, with many numbers. And numbers are important because uh, they, they, they support the words uh, we have here. Um, now, I want to thank, first of all, all of the keynote speakers, starting with Nadine, Noor, and again, Fahad. And this was just a starting point. And Fahad, you, you said something very important, like when someone comes in a company, you help them to navigate also in the right direction. And this is also the role at how you can see us, Berlin Partner and uh, MCIT, Tasma Digital Valley, as let's say the one uh, point of contact where we uh, talk, where we have a first conversation and then bring you to the right partners like IPEC or the ones I want to introduce now. Uh, so that the entry is as easy as possible and you don't lose time in researching, Googling who could be the, the right one to talk to. And with this, I want to open our panel discussion. Uh, and I'm really excited and really grateful to have uh, uh, four of our key members and key pillars of, the, of, of, of Qatar in our panel. We have Mr. Mohammed Al Almadi. He's the head of investment development, Qatar Development Bank. Uh, short QDB and uh, QDB supports SMEs in all directions and has a, also a very strong fintech focus. We have Dr. Dani Ramadan uh, from the Tech Venture Fund, Qatar Science and Technology Park, short QSTP. Um, they, uh, it, they, have, they have a free zone, they're an incubator, an accelerator, and as mentioned in the introduction, also venture fund to support uh, startups and companies. We have Mr. Jahun Jirbek Burhonov. Uh, I hope I said it right. Please excuse me. I think the short firm you also wrote it is Jahun Jir. Um, uh, VP Business Development for Qatar Financial Center, short QFC. Uh, also free zone with focus on fintech and e-commerce. So also a pillar into the retail and e-commerce. And last but not least, we have uh, from Orido, one of the largest telcos here in the region, Mr. Vladinov Konsaliv Flaichu, Senior Manager ICT for ind Industry and Business Development. And I think it's very exciting to see also here from the infrastructure side, uh, global, uh, close collaboration, uh, but also the opportunities here, uh, um, because as uh, uh, mentioned by Fahad, the infrastructure, you sit on a dune, you have internet as faster than probably everywhere in Germany. And I come, I know it well, I come from a little town in the south of Germany. I'm really happy I have somewhere reception. So warm welcome to all four of you. And um, how does it work? We have some questions we want to discuss in this panel, but to all of you, please feel free to share your questions you have 
uh, to the four gentlemen. Um, we will collect them and we will have after uh, our panel discussion, we have time for the Q&A and to go through uh, hopefully most of your questions. And with this, I would like my first questions or already two questions together to address to all four of you. And I would go from my screen from left to right, uh, if starting with flat, uh, to please ask you to also make an introduction uh, about uh, RIDO to describe briefly your role uh, uh, of your organization and how does it fit in the overall strategy of building Qatar startup ecosystem. And probably in, while you're saying that, you're probably also reaching out to my second question, how can you support from RIDO startups, uh, um, startups to expand here in Qatar? Flat. Thank you very much. Uh, hope you uh, you can hear me. So nice to meet you all, and uh, uh, thank you for having me and to be to be part of this uh, this discussion. So uh, I won't talk about myself uh, because I don't want to do transforming. I'll talk about Oridu at the end of the day because I think that's the that's the role of uh, me and together with uh, our management team. So we as Oridu we are the let's say the former incumbent. Uh, uh, I was part of Deutsche Telekom team. Uh, perhaps you know the, the Deutsche Telekom because they are the incumbent in, in Germany. So we are the leading uh, telco and uh, ICT provider. I think that and I like to highlight ICT because look we're not just a telecommunication company. Uh, we're not just uh, selling internet and mobile phones. No, we're trying to transform Qatar. Uh, into a smart nation, to a digital nation. And uh, I would like to just to uh, tell about one of the programs, and I know that with uh, with uh, MCIT, former MOTC, and uh, that we're delivering is the TASMU, is the TASMU platform, the digital, let's say, uh, platform of platforms or digital nation, and how we can support not only the, the companies, but more or less the startups. And I know that uh, I'm jumping to, to, to your uh, second question. So we as a reader, like I said, we are the uh, for, uh, provider, the trustful partner to what we like to say to, our, uh, to all our businesses. Uh, we have a full range of products and services starting, like I said, from connectivity. Uh, we are building and hosting the Microsoft platforms, the Google Google ones, the VMware ones. So I think we are the anchor when it, terms, when it comes to connectivity and then when it comes to cloud services, IoT services. Look, we have an uh, NB IoT uh, network. Uh, and like uh, uh, my, uh, my colleague said previously, yes, you can be on the middle of the desert, on the sand dune, enjoying the enjoying Qatar, and you, you are fully connected uh, to, to the world. And that's through, through our network. We are the first net, uh, country uh, or the first uh, company in the world that uh, had the first uh, 5G call uh, worldwide. So I think we are quite leaders in terms of when it comes to new technologies, new services. And that's why uh, I'm here and uh, to, to hear from you because we're always open together with uh, our partners to, uh, um, to bring new solutions and new companies into Qatar. And the, the way that we do this as we do, we have our own uh, startup uh, accelerator uh, programs, uh, something that we're doing with uh, QDB as well. And uh, uh, Mohamed Alemadi is here and he can uh, he can take it uh, from there. So we have our own accelerators either through QDB uh, and we're fully in support either uh, as a standalone as well. And we have our own hackathons and we have our uh, different initiatives. As long uh, and, and uh, just to add on this, we have the TASMO accelerator. Uh, and I think uh, there will be a different uh, communication next week at the uh, Smart City Expo, uh, where we are the, let's say, the uh, uh, prime and the supporter of, of this initiative. So we're always open to new ideas uh, and it's a very dynamic so what i want to highlight it's a very dynamic market it's a very small but very uh, very dynamic uh, sometimes uh, uh, qatari companies are taking a leapfrog in terms of uh, technologies uh, because look it's small market it's uh, it's one city or uh, it's a very concentrated uh, economy um, but uh, look, uh, and this is what I'm curious to find out uh, different, uh, different companies or different ideas uh, or how you know, we can start a discussion and collaboration and then let's see uh, where, the, where the discussion leads.
Thank you so much, Vlad. Uh, uh, very exciting. And uh, you, you already uh, like, did the pass, kick the ball over to Mohammed. So I, I would take that and uh, word over to you, Mohammed, an introduction and also how do you how can you support startups uh, looking to expand to Qatar? Sure, sure. Uh, thank you, Jörg. Thank you uh, also uh, to the rest of the panelists today. I'd like also to thank uh, the Ministry, Tesmo, uh, Berlin Startup, as well as the Investment Promotion Agency for uh, coordinating and arranging this important session. Uh, and I think it's a great opportunity, you know, also to uh, to talk our, to, to our distinguished guests and startups here today to understand more about what we do in the ecosystem. Now, to give you the context of what uh, Qatar Development Bank, uh, our QDB, I'll call it QDB in my speech, uh, does in this ecosystem. I mean, uh, QDB is, is, is mandated to support and to enable private sector uh, to further participate on the non-hydrocarbon GDP. And we do that by uh, enabling them. So I like always to use the word of enablement. And that enablement is achieved uh, through different services and offerings. So we take the startups, we take the company, we take the SME or the entrepreneur through the whole cycle. So we provide through Qatar Development Bank and our partners an access to capability building uh, development uh, through across, across the cycle. So we ensure that we are providing the right support to our entrepreneurs when it comes to capability building. When I mean, when I talk about capability building, I'm talking about business skills, business modeling, uh, try to support them with the uh, uh, with the right due diligence, with the right quality check they need to do on their uh, studies and feasibility study before they start uh, their project. And also we try, or we assess them as well, to focus on the priority sectors where the, the opportunity are there. Uh, on the second element, the second pillar of our uh, enablement uh, tool and strategy as well is the access to information. Right, so it's important before establishing any business to provide the right data and information to uh, the company or the entrepreneur. Uh, so this is also provided through the, the 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 offering of multiple reports, sectors reports, statistics, and we try to bring transparency to the investor and the market. The the third element, which is which is a key pillar and, and an element that I represent basically, uh, which is the access to finance. So uh, as a bank, we do have uh, multiple banking products. To support our uh, to support the SMEs and the startups and to enable them in growing their businesses. So we do provide all sorts of support, uh, starting from working capital support, project financing, export insurance, uh, and all uh, relevant. I would say guarantee lending as well. All sorts of support when it comes to uh, medium to large projects uh, through our banking function. The other element to which uh, we provide access to finance with is the access to finance through uh, equity participation, which is through our venture capital fund. Uh, so basically, we set up a venture capital fund uh, a couple of years ago uh, to invest directly in small and medium enterprises, uh, as well as we run some fund, fund programs. Uh, on top of that, we do invest also on the graduates of our incubators and accelerators, uh, and I'll tap into this uh, shortly. The third element is the access to uh, markets. So we do this uh, through uh, our local arm, which is the localization team, where we provide access to government contracts and big private sector procurement contracts to our SMEs. And we do provide also an access to inter international markets through our export promotion and development agency, which we run a number of programs through that agency, starting from capacity building uh, for exporter uh, financial products, as well as uh, several trade missions and matchmaking events. Uh, I would like to just take a pause on my on, on the section of, of the incubation because it's very relevant to the international startups. So we started the incubation ecosystem back in 2015 with a very general incubation center, which is uh, Cubic, other business incubation center, uh, which we run a, a program in collaboration with Redo in, uh, which is digital and beyond, which focuses on general uh, tech companies who wish to either soft land in Qatar or accelerate any growth from Qatar. Uh, and that has innovation slash technology uh, element in it. So we do, a full, we do run a full fledged uh, incubation program, which, which lasts for, uh, most of them last actually for 12 weeks. Uh, on these programs, we provide end-to-end -end solutions to our startups who wish to uh, enhance their business model or who wish to uh, get access to the relevant stakeholders here in Qatar. 
And following that, once we saw the success of the general incubation center, we decided to establish more focused and more sectorial incubation centers, uh, which is which we started recently, which was Qatar Fintech Hub, and we recently started the Scale Seven, which focuses on uh, which focuses on uh, on on fashion technology. So this is in a nutshell uh, what we do. Uh, the support that we provide the startups is mainly cross incubation slash uh, investment and capacity building. So this is where we, we do provide the supports to our startups and, and mainly the international startups. We recently started to have uh, soft landing uh, programs for our international startups who wish to establish in Qatar. Uh, Qatar Fintech Hub is a great model where we have a representation of more than 50% of international startups among all our graduates. All of these startups have been through a very uh, intense development program, has been through uh, a collaboration program with our partners, with our ecosystem players, with our clients where they can open business opportunities uh, with. And all of these graduates are complemented with uh, a, a seed ticket of investments through our investment farm. Uh, this is a nutshell what we do and how can we support the startups. And I hope that I, I managed to cover everything in, in, uh, in my given time frame. I'd say. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed, uh, for, for, this, for this overview. And I know that you, uh, you just mentioned you have some time constraints as well. That's why I would like to share one question which we just received from one of the startups already and uh, please uh, Danny and John Gier, uh, excuse that I uh, take this question uh, already but it, it fits very well uh, the question is does QDB also support non-Qatari entrepreneurs and if so uh, what kind of programs uh, uh, for non-Qatari entrepreneurs uh, uh, who own 100% of a Qatari company Your mic is on mute. Yeah, sorry. So, so basically, I covered this in my previous question. I mean, if you notice, recently we started to expand our offering to uh, Qatari-based companies with non-Qatari ownership. And uh, I would think of a threefold, so I would say. One of them is the access to the advisory services and support, of which uh, we do provide support services to Qatari startups. So basically a subsidized uh, accounting, marketing, legal advisory services uh, through our, our offering. And it's, it's been dealt with uh, through a top, I would say, f f uh, audit and, and legal firm, as well as marketing agencies, et cetera. So basically all the support function that startups need to, uh, to, to, to utilize uh, to operate their business. This is the first element. The second element definitely is the capacity building and the access to incubation acceleration centers as well as our regular training courses, uh, which is uh, very wide in terms of offering. Uh, the third element would be is the access to the, uh, to the, to the, to the venture capital fund, uh, where there is a strong uh, Qatari angle on their investments, or there is a strong, uh, and you know how that can be brought to the Qatari economy and the Qatari ecosystem. So these are the areas of offering when it comes to Qatari companies with, with non-Qatari ownership. So basically we deal with all the companies that are based in Qatar here. I mean, uh, with a unified approach, I would say. So there are also the services of, mm -hmm. of the trade mission and export promotion and localization is also extended to these companies. Perfect, thank you, Mohammed. And with this, I would like to give the word to Jaunjir from QFC. Also, quick uh, an introduction of QFC. What kind of support do you uh, uh, do you provide to startups interested to come to Qatar? And maybe we can take this question also on: What support do you offer to uh, to uh, non-Qatari entrepreneurs? Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for um, uh, for invitation. Um, and obviously, the greetings to uh, all the participants here and then to our listeners. Uh, thank you for organizing uh, such a nice event. Um, QFC, the Qatar Financial Center, I think so far we heard um, one of our key enablers, um, uh, Mr. Mohammed mentioned about the Qatar Development Bank and how they play the key role in mo most of the support services as well as in terms of funding of those uh, startups and SMEs. And then we had uh, Mr. Ulat in terms of the ICT and then the telecommunication the whole network support in terms of the uh, infrastructure. Uh, now, I think QC comes into play where once you decide that there is the opportunity in uh, Qatar and then you like to expand your business or your venture into Qatar, 
Uh, I think this is where uh, QFC comes into play. We are the one-stop shop onshore business financial center. We have our own uh, regulatory environment uh, where we base ourselves on English common law jurisdiction. Uh, we have our own commercial um, jurisdiction. Uh, we also have our own um, uh, international dispute resolution court. So all this ecosystem enables for you to set up yourselves here in Qatar and then obviously access those opportunities mentioned uh, before me. Now, obviously we offer 100% ownership for you. Uh, you can be based yourself here, uh, and then obviously you can open uh, various structures. We have a structure starting from professional business services. Uh, so if you're offering business service or professional service, uh, you are the startup in offering such a, such a services, then obviously we are the right for, uh, platform for you. Uh, if you're also thinking of opening more of a holding company or a special purpose vehicle, let's say you have an IP right for a specific, or you have a trademark, or you have some kind of licensable activity uh, from the startup, and you'd like to you know, create the structure to, to, to hold that um, uh, specifically in, in, the, in the legal entity, this is where we also come into play. Now, these are the, all the structure things we can discuss later. Now, as a QFC, what's our contribution to the Qatari economy? Um, I think earlier, uh, Mohammed from the Investment Promotion Agency, he mentioned uh, the role of IPA. Uh, if you look back in you know, early 2000s, when Qatar was opening up uh, its own economy and then trying to maybe you know, diversify away from the hydrocarbon economy to more of a knowledge-based, services-based economy. Now, in 2005, I think there was a need to obviously bring uh, professional services uh, to, to the state of Qatar. This is where uh, QFC was initiated by Fazar Emir. And then uh, 2005 is the, is, the, is the year where Qatar Financial Center was established. So in 2005 onwards, we, we start bringing uh, to, the, to the shore the, the financial center and uh, financial uh, services companies. We're talking about uh, banks, asset managers, insurance, etc. But over the course of the next seven, eight years, uh, we understood that we can need to also bring, along with financial services, we need to bring professional service. We are talking about the legal services, accounting, auditing, right? Uh, marketing, branding, the, the engineering service, architecture, all of these support services, information technology, uh, along with that. So over the course of, uh, I would say, uh, last uh, 16 years plus, uh, QC has grown uh, quite extensively. Currently, we have registered more than 1,400 firms uh, under Qatar Financial Center jurisdiction. And our portfolio is quite diverse. We have companies from all parts of the globe. Now, um, and, and obviously we, we, we offer some benefits to startups. I think this is later we're gonna discuss the specific to startups and this is where uh, I will perhaps interject on the startups. But this is in a nutshell, QFC, uh, Qatar Financial Center. Thank you much. Thank you so much uh, for the overview. I have one point uh, before I hand over to Danny. Uh, to all presenters and also the ones uh, or, um, Fah Fahad already shared it, but to all presenters here, could you please share in the chat your contacts, uh, your, contact, your contact details, if that is okay with you? So we will share with the startups uh, directly. Okay, perfect. We will do so. Okay. Good. Danny, over to you. Um, same questions. Uh, for an in, you had to wait long now. No uh, problem. Same question, like introduction of QSDP, really exciting what you're all doing. Um, uh, how could you support startups and also especially non qatari startups? Sure. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you to Berlin Partners. And it's always a pleasure to connect with my colleagues from, from QDB, from QFC, from Oridu, and, and, and certainly from, from, from IPAC. So very briefly, my name is Danny. I'm the investment director at the Qatar Science Technology Park. And in that role, uh, I administer uh, a fund called the Technology Venture Fund. And for some context, uh, the Qatar Science Technology Park uh, is a partner of, of Qatar Foundation. And Qatar Foundation is home to many of the universities that Fahad mentioned uh, in, uh, in his opening remarks. So more pointedly, the Science Technology Park is, e is an economic zone, uh, which focuses primarily on science technology and more pointedly than that, applied technology development. And what we've sought to do over the past 12 or 13 years uh, is, is really uh, try to own uh, all aspects 
of the innovation value chain. And so in order to do that, we, we had to pivot our model uh, over the years where we used to focus heavily on large uh, multinational companies. Uh, but we, we needed to ensure that we were helping the, the innovation ecosystem grow. And so in order to do that, we really started from the grassroots. Uh, and so we run a series of programs, which we call mindset training programs. These are, these are programs and initiatives and, and, and outreach efforts designed to introduce the idea of alternative careers uh, into the, the local ecosystem. When, when participants and, and other interested parties move to, to more mature levels, we support ideation. And, and similar to, to what my colleague Mohammed mentioned, ideation comes through forms of acceleration. And so we launched our own accelerator uh, maybe five or six years ago. And, and, and this accelerator helps uh, aspiring founding teams, perhaps those that have never been entrepreneurs before, first time founders, understand if their idea actually has a market. Does it have a market with customers that actually want to buy this product? Can we help those aspiring entrepreneurs build a business case? Uh, can we introduce them to methods of, of raising capital? And over about a four or five month period, we see uh, groups of individuals uh, migrate into, into startups. And in order to facilitate that element of it, we created our own incubator. And this is possible as we are an economic zone. And so we, we allow 100% uh, foreign ownership uh, of, uh, of entities in an LLC structure. Uh, and those first-time founders uh, can become first-time business uh, business owners. And so our incubator has about 30 startups in it now. All of them are high-tech startups. Uh, but having that primary platform, it's, it's really not enough uh, in, in the rapidly growing ecosystem, which my colleagues uh, uh, describe. We, needed, we need to constantly add more. And so uh, we realized that the accessibility of risk capital uh, was... Uh, it was simply a challenge. And so how can we as Qatar Foundation address it? Uh, we started a venture fund and that venture fund is called the Technology Venture Fund. And we, we have the ability uh, to lead on early stage seed investments, which are cultivated through not just the Qatar Foundation ecosystem, but also the wider ecosystem, again, referenced by, by my colleagues in, in, in QDB and QFC uh, and others. And, and I wanna use this point to to answer the second question of, of how we engage with international startups. It's because we were able to recognize uh, that, that this market uh, may be small in number, but the opportunities are, are significant. Qatar has, has taken uh, some, some very uh, attractive uh, initiatives on board, whether it be the future of, of urban living through uh, entities like Lusail or Musharab, uh, looking at the, the future of events and some of the technology that we've seen uh, deployed in, su in support of the World Cup coming forward. Uh, in, in healthcare, understanding the future of precision medicine by starting uh, national programs and sequencing genomes and, and building biobanks. These, these initiatives create their own gravity. And so we've been able, as well as my colleagues, to take advantage of this gravity and allow international startups uh, the opportunity to access these opportunities in a sandbox-like fashion, but also support them uh, through follow-on capital. And so we are uh, a relatively small fund uh, with a small team. And so we, we understand where we want to spend our time and, 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 and where we don't. And so uh, like, like many uh, young funds, we, we don't lead on price grounds, uh, but we, we are a source of follow-on capital where there's a strategic link. And so we're able to, to join Series A and Series B participations of international companies that are that are pulled into the gravity strategically uh, for, for activities happening in Qatar. And, and I think the, the beauty of what we do uh, is, is that one where we're inside uh, uh, what we call a multiversity, where we have many elements of Qatar Foundation that work together as one uh, to, to share in the impact. And, but, but two, we're part of a wider ecosystem where, where we work very closely with our colleagues uh, in QDB. We work very closely with startups that are emanating from, from QFC. Uh, and, and we all recognize this is a small neighborhood. So we, we all uh, come together to support each other. And that's, that's a very, very positive and promising aspect to any international startup uh, that's looking to, to expand. Uh, into Qatar. So, so you're, I'm hoping I answered your question. I'm, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm more than happy to take a follow-up uh, if I didn't hit it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And I do have a follow-up. But Please. before the follow-up questions, uh, yep. I, I want to uh, announce that Mr. Mohadi, uh, uh, pardon, Mohammed <laughs> uh, Alemadi, 
uh, has, a, has a time constraint and unfortunately um, needs to leave uh, uh, now. If you have questions to Mohammed, we will collect them and share with Mohammed. Uh, so we will funnel them so that all your questions get answered. And I want to use the opportunity to thank you so much for the overview, for being part of this, Mohammed, and uh, really excited to, to drive this together with you. Thank you very much uh, for the kind invitation. I would like also to thank my dear and distinguished colleagues uh, here, Dr. Danny, Johan, uh, Johan and uh, Vlad from Reed as well, uh, for, for joining uh, this session with me. I, I'm, I'm very delighted and I am really uh, sorry to leave uh, before we, we, we end up that uh, interesting panel, but I have uh, time constraint. Uh, I remain available to address any questions. I've shared my email uh, address as well as the team's email address on the private chat. Uh, for any questions, I'll be happy to address them. Uh, thank you very much, and I wish you a, a fruitful event uh, for it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mohammed. And uh, we, I, I, I want to ask you all to please uh, share your questions in the chat. So, because soon we would go to our Q and A session. So please shoot all your questions. Put the three gentlemen on the hot chair. They're gonna answer everything uh, until I receive some of some more. And I would like to ask basically all three of you again two questions, starting with you because you mentioned two uh, one important point. Um, World Cup, it's coming. How do you and it's prospering? How do you see development after the World Cup? Will this continue? Uh, that's to me here. Yes, that's to you yeah. now. Yeah, I, I think it, I think it will continue, and and even when the when we recognize the World Cup comes to an end, it doesn't mean that the progress that's happened across the local ecosystem uh, and the wider economy is 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 going to come to an end. I think there are some there are some major trends, uh, global trends uh, that that Qatar is well positioned to capitalize on, and, and so. Uh, these trends uh, really speak to to where we've invested. We, as the as, as not just QSDP or the Qatar Foundation, but the the, the entire economy, uh, have have made a sizable uh, commitment towards precision healthcare. Right, we have to recognize that the cost per genome continues to drop precipitously, uh, and and Qatar has taken uh, a leadership role in running a Qatar genome program, which allows us. Uh, tremendous amount of, uh, of access to data uh, from, uh, from those genomes. And, and I think when you create uh, that kind of data set, uh, you create a platform for, for novel diagnostics mm -hmm. and therapeutics to come out of it. And, and again, I think the, between the, the access to healthcare, which, which Fahad alluded to earlier, uh, and the, the commitment to the platform of the genome and startups, both locally and internationally, uh, focusing on precision healthcare, I, I think the, the growth we're going to see there uh, is, is significant. And, and, and mm -hmm. I, can, I, can, I can follow up with another, another example, and that's, uh, that's in, in ed tech. Uh, prior to the to the pandemic, uh, Qatar Foundation through the World Innovation Summit of Education was was already taking a leadership role in disruptive education, uh, and and this is a global accelerator uh, looking to to identify uh, disruptive solutions in, in education. And then I think what we saw during the pandemic uh, was that these solutions uh, allowed education to continue uh, not just in in, yeah. in places like Qatar or the United States, but 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 globally. Uh, and it really changed how, uh, how education can happen and the, and the comfort levels uh, of, those, of those new modalities. And, and I think because uh, of, of this uh, resurgence in interest in novel education platforms, uh, Qatar stands to benefit simply because we've, we've made a sizable commitment in this space and we're now capitalizing uh, on that commitment. And, and there are a number of other sectors uh, where, where both the foundation and the wider economy uh, have, have made uh, commitments in areas where we feel the, the market is going to grow in the next five to 10 years. And so I don't feel that the World Cup is the, uh, is the, is, is the end. I feel it's the beginning uh, of, a, of a more knowledge and, and innovation driven stage of the economy. I like that. Thank you, thank you, Danny, for this. And uh, I, I think everyone who has kids can feel with you, with your last example of education. And sure. I have to say, from my own experience, I have two kids. It is, uh, it, it, it is great here. And I heard from, from many friends all over the world, they are struggling. Uh, 
maybe a flat to you, same question, how do you see, or which focus areas uh, do you see after the World Cup? And also, how do you see the, the role of and the importance of international startups? Okay, so perfect. Thank you very much for the question. So I see here two different uh, areas. So one is the, let's say, what we call the legacy. Uh, what happens after the World Cup? Uh, look, there will be plenty of stadium, plenty of activities, let's say, uh, or areas that will not just disappear or will go unused. So I think uh, here Qatar has plenty of other, let's say, events or other plans. And I think uh, the 2030 vision, let's say, what we, we hear in the Qatar, we, we know it, but everyone can Google search uh, Qatar 2030 vision, and they can see that there are five different pillars that uh, Qatar is focusing on. One is ed education, of course. The other one is transport and co construction sports, because look, it's not just about this World Cup. The Asian Games in 2030 will be here. Uh, definitely many, many other uh, events will be organized by uh, uh, by by. Qatar. So I think this is just the, the start, similar to what, uh, to what my colleague Danny said. So it's the legacy. What happens to all this, uh, this infrastructure? And I think that in how we can optimize and how, let's say, smart solutions we can support. And uh, here, look, I'm just touching a few few areas that I'm currently looking, let's say, uh, uh, smart building, uh, quality, air quality, uh, environment, uh, agriculture, even if it's very uh, small here in Qatar, but uh, uh, for Qatar to be a self-sustainable country, it's one of the aims in terms of, I think, uh, poultry, in terms of agriculture. So I think there are a few areas that uh, I think there can be further developed and that can grow exponentially. So that's more or less just to, to talk about the legacy. And I know, look, there will be a, a medical in terms of healthcare, uh, Qatar, uh, Qatar wants to be to be like a center, like a hub in terms of medical services. So what we have here in Qatar, it's more or less like a medical city, as we call it, it's more or less a big geographic area with uh, plenty of hospitals and uh, dormitories and everything. So uh, you don't have to go from one part of the city to another, everything will be handled there. And there is a plan to build another medical uh, city in Lucille, it's another part of, the, of Doha. And that is, I think it has like 1.2 million square meter uh, square meter on the surface. So there's plenty of uh, potential of new uh, new business ideas uh, that Qatar is looking into. How we uh, or into uh, are supporting this? Uh, so look, in my role, it's product development and management. Just uh, yeah. just to just to start something. So we're always looking for new business ideas, new solutions or products to, to call it this way that we can partner and we can uh, bring here to our to our business customers. We are always so that's one of our one hour um, uh, role as Oridu because we're the national uh, carrier here is to bring the best of the best. So and this is why sometimes we are we have let's say like a different uh, beauty contest to say it this way we have a quite rigorous way of when we select our partners because mm -hmm. once we do that, that we op we can open the door to any business customer here in Qatar. So we are the incumbent. We we are, we are been we've been here for 40, 50 oh. years. So we can we are the trusted partner. And uh, similar to what I said earlier, look, we have our uh, incubation uh, centers together with the QDB, together with the, with TASMO. So we have these accelerators for startups that we can we can support as well. So funding through 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 our different uh, channels, and after that uh, through the let's say the partnership uh, that we are uh, we are doing day by day for for many uh, many let's say worldwide uh, providers. Mm. And then also, I think the important, yes. Thank you for, for this. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you, Fla. And, and like, as you said, globally, I think that's the word. So the, you, you look for the best of the best. And that is also international, regional, international. So uh, as, as long as it's, uh, yeah, it is the solution you're looking for, it's open, it's a potential for everyone. Correct. And I have and uh, to... two questions now for, yeah. yeah, just to add on this, so I'm, uh, let's say, we, we, here we are already in Qatar, but at the same time we are uh, uh, regional and uh, telco, so we operate across uh, from Southeast Asia to Indonesia, where, let's say, the population is, 
you know, our broad base, like more than 100 million subscribers to uh, Kuwait, Oman, Tunisia, and Algeria. So Oriental Qatar is always seen as the center of excellence. So what, what usually happens when we uh, really are successful with a solution or a product or a partners, we always export that partner or that uh, component to our uh, sister companies as well. So there's not just an opportunity just for Oriental Qatar, but at the same time it's for uh, Oriental Group as well. I think that's a that's a very very interesting facet. It's not just the country; it is, it it can be a, it is a hub for the entire region. Thank you right. for this, Vlad. And I have two more questions. I we see in the general chat, and please excuse that <laughs> this is shared to everyone. We will share this with Mohammed about QDB support. Um, uh, this one we discussed already, but uh, we will share also follow up questions with him. I have two questions with uh, to you, Shangjir. Uh, Number one is um, about, uh, you mentioned before QFC's role in developing the fintech sector. Could you elaborate here? Uh, what are the trends and opportunities which you see? Thank you for the question. Um, I think to answer this question is uh, a more of a, maybe I'll just echo uh, my colleague's uh, discussion here. Um, Danny mentioned about the uh, ad tech specifically, and then he also alluded on the health tech. Um, so these are the major trends, uh, I totally agree. Uh, maybe one of the things I would add is the sports tech as well. Uh, this is where uh, Qatar has massively invested in uh, as, as a sport uh, itself, as an ecosystem. So after World Cup, uh, what happens? This is what uh, Vlad kind of touched on, on the, on the legacy part. Now, when we discuss health tech, ad tech, we discussed about the um, sports tech and all the tech-related industries. Uh, at the end of the day, we, we come to the, uh, the payments of it, right? So when we discuss specifically financial services, um, um, obviously, obviously for the long time financial services, uh, you know, they, they were quite owned, if you like, um, by, by the banks themselves, by the major corner store, brick and mortar kind of, kind of banks, right? But what's happening is, you know, on the last, uh, you know, not, not far ago, not far ago, 15, 20 years, we have this new, uh, if you like, upcomers like a fintech, right? Now, specifically in Qatari uh, sense, uh, fintech means obviously we have uh, Qatar fintech accelerator program where Mohammed uh, Alimad represents. Uh, we as a QFC, we work with Qatar fintech uh, platform very closely. Um, I think they've already done four cohorts. All these cohorts come to us. Uh, 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 most of them, they, they come to us as the uh, to, to set up themselves uh, and, and, and perhaps benefit from the opportunities available in Qatar. And in terms of um, um, what's, what are the sectors they're looking for, um, I, I can say um, some of the sectors would be, for example, SME financing, P2P, um, sectors like, for example, KYC, RegTech, for example, would be interesting. Uh, in the Qatari sense, uh, Islamic finance is also quite uh, highly encouraged. So if the, if the technology is you know, within the Islamic fintech, that's also quite uh, unique. Um, so that's the added value. Um, so from the financial sector perspective, we can also see e-commerce is, is quite growing. So the fintech as an enabler to the e-commerce is very much growing here in Qatar. And uh, we can already see the, the usage of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the payments itself quite growing. So we have a lot of payment gateways nowadays available, which was, if you look back, even like maybe four or five years ago, I'm sure Vlad can tell me, four or five years ago, we didn't have a lot of payment gateways yet. Now we already have, at least I can count, maybe five, six of them. And that all automatically creates this opportunity for me when I'm attracting company to mention, well, when you're coming as, as the, as the, as the um, uh, startup, your, your last mile delivery in terms of the, of the physical delivery, your payments in terms of the payments, all this infrastructure is also already available if you are thinking of uh, setting up yourself. But this discussion, unfortunately, four or five years ago, I would have cut it because unfortunately we didn't have that kind of opportunity. But now I can safely say that from the fintech perspective, we have good players. Now another thing uh, which is growing is uh, I can see um, um, some of the new interesting technologies uh, in terms of the uh, in terms of the now I would, I would, I would say the crypto that uh, uh, this kind of things that not so much allowed yet in, in Qatar um, if you're thinking about the, uh, the the crypto assets 
But in terms of the blockchain itself as a technology, it's very much allowed. And if you have a technology based on blockchain or anything uh, as a foundation to that, uh, that's uh, again uh, the, the area we can speak of. And obviously the Qatar FinTech and I'm sure QSTP would be right fit for that as well. And we from the from the angle also would help as well. So from that from that angle, I think FinTech itself is quite growing. And I, I know that Q, uh, the Qatar Central Bank, along with the Qatar uh, uh, Financial Center Regulatory Authority and other uh, financial services ecosystem players, they're working on the sandbox. So once the sandbox is uh, regulations uh, comes up, I think this hopefully propels the fintech uh, to, to to another height. I hope. Thank you. Thank you so much for this. And uh, now I have a question also to you. And after that, the same question to Danny, maybe very, very quick and brief. Uh, uh, it came from, from different angles now. We see there are opportunities for international startups in different sectors. FinTech, one of them, health, we heard before, education, uh, obviously smart city. Um, to open US free zones, QFC and also QSTP, can everyone open a company in a free zone and how complicated is it? Maybe first you, uh, Zhang Jia, and then uh, the same question to Danny, quick and brief. Sure. Uh, quickly, I think one of the distinguishing things is uh, uh, between uh, perhaps QSTP and QFC, we are not uh, directly a free zone as such. Uh, what we are is we are onshore business and financial center. When you say onshore business financial center is um, our jurisdiction applies uh, to the mainland itself. So once we give you license as a 100% owner, you can do business right away in Qatar. So we're not specifically, uh, if you like, framed within the real estate as such. So from that angle, we're a Qatar Financial Center, onshore business center, giving you 100% ownership, as I mentioned. And we work with uh, international firms, local firms. So um, if you are you know, based outside and then you would like to expand as a as an LLC or as a branch, uh, we have the solution, uh, we can incorporate. Okay, thank you. Danny, now more than from the free zone perspective. Sure. So we've, we've been around for, again, about 13 years now. And so uh, the processes that we've set in place to, to assist uh, companies are, are, are fully digitized at this point. We, we have an online portal that links you to our free zone system. We, we clearly articulate all of, the, all of the requirements and also the benefits of incorporating in the free zone. Uh, if you're a multinational, if you're a larger entity, you're looking to incorporate a branch uh, in QSDP, that process uh, is, is, is quite straightforward. Uh, if you're a startup looking to incorporate an uh, in, in LLC, uh, we've expedited that process relative to what you would do for, for an, an, uh, a multinational company. Uh, and, and that's a very rapid process. So that's really within, within a matter of weeks and, and uh, not, uh, not a lot of requirements other than uh, an initial application, which we can, which we can, rapidly, uh, which we can rapidly approve. Uh, and, and so I think what we, what, the approach we take to, to anyone looking to join uh, the Science Technology Park is, is very much an iterative one. Uh, it's not a submit the application and hope things work out. It's very iterative. We want to work with you. If we have questions, we we're able to engage with you very quickly. Uh, and, and really, this is how we're able to get companies incorporated in a, in a matter of weeks. Great. Thank you, De Thank you Danny. And uh, looking at the time, uh, we are already over our time slot. Uh, and there are a couple of more questions. We will forward them uh, directly uh, to the panelists uh, and bring you in contact um, with, the, with, the, with the startups. Uh, you shared your contact. We will, we will also make sure that we have here the direct connection. And with this, I want to thank you so much for giving the overview from different perspectives. I think it's very exciting and gives even more motivation uh, to discuss about joint opportunities in Qatar. Thank you so much, Vlad. Thank you so much, Danny and Shahum uh, Jir. Thank you so much for the panel. Thank you. And with this, now looking us. at everyone, thank you. Now looking at everyone uh, here in the live stream, um, is this we are at the end of our official uh, 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 big program as a big group. Uh, we want now, as the next step, go into our networking sessions. We have three rooms for this: health. Uh, smart city and fintech, where uh, uh, participants uh, of each of the member firm will be. You will have the opportunity to uh, to pitch your company and 
I saw some more questions, also ask more detailed questions in these networking sessions, which helps us to understand each other better and what joint opportunities could be there. Um, as some last words before going into these uh, yeah, wonder, uh, wonder rooms, uh, again, a big thank you to the panelists, to the speakers before, to Berlin Partners to make this happen. It is really an honor and a pleasure having this. And I want to pick a buzzword which Vlad and also Danny and Jan mentioned before. Um, Qatar, it's, an, it's a small country, but it's an entire country. It is a wonderful opportunity to drive the nation, uh, to have it from a startup perspective also often as a proof of concept, as it serves really also as a hub for the entire region and the world. So we have opportunities in the country to make something big together and even further. So thank you everyone, and I'm excited now for the networking sessions. <laughs>